Uh, he didn't submit anything. Not that I saw. Yeah. And he's not even here. All right. Sorry. How dare you? How dare you try to help your fellow classmate with your kindness and your empathy? You've ousted him instead. Yeah. Now you've, you set him. You threw oh, yeah. him yeah, in the Big time. Now you've proven that he doesn't care about his work. That's all right. I forgive you, Alberto. E2, Brutus. E2. <laughs> Any questions? Please. Hey, since you're interested in pixel art and stuff, uh, I was oh, wondering. Oh man, take it easy. I was wondering if uh, you heard of Adventure Game Studios. Adventure Game Studios. I have uh, not. No. Oh, it's a really awesome app that lets you make your own like point and click adventures, in pixel art, and uh, adventure you need coding. You need coding to do it, but it's simple coding. So like, you already knowing coding, if you probably like it's really easy. Adventure Game Studio. Is it a f mobile app or is it just an app? Just it's an app. like a desktop app. Uh, they're like Anime Maker or something like that on Steam. It's an actual game that people make games on. Uh, maybe, I've not seen that. Do you mean RPG Maker? Yeah, that's it. Oh yeah, it's probably similar to that. It has like a lot of really intuitive tools. I've tried to use it lots of times, but I get bogged down in like, the coding aspect. Some of those can be seen as shortcuts, though. Instead of like learning a well, powerful program. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, the game that um, so like my. Ryan Minerning pixel art right now. <laughs> if you don't know what that means, it's like the, the artist in which, or the art artistry that really inspires me right now. Uh, greatly is the art from Flint Hook. I like this pixel art style. Not that though, that's not specific to the, if you look at the game. Never heard of it. Yeah, it's it's a cool game. Is it like a platformer? Yeah, sort of. This is weird. I like showing all the different parts. Metroidvania? Yeah, I love the animation. I love the little designs, all the structures. It's like the perfect pixel. It's like the perfect pixel uh, ratio, too. I just love it. It's like, like, it's like perfect. Everything about it. <laughs> At least in, in my eyes, I think so. I love it a lot. So this is kind of my goal to get this good at animation and pixel art. Hmm. I just need to to learn how they handle their their colors and how they handle their. Uh, I saw how they do animation. They do everything out of Photoshop, which is nuts to me. Photoshop is great, but it's not that great for animation. At least I don't think so. Maybe this person just really like figured it out. It's just because there's just so many, there's so many things that Photoshop doesn't give you access to. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, I don't get yeah. why. Is that like where, where you have like all the layers and all the layers of your frames? Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's the software that I, I, I have it? <laughs> I wonder where I put it. Let me see if I put it under the tools. 
Cloudflare. Is it in here? No. Let's see. Don't worry about it. I'm pretty sure I put it in here somewhere, though. There's the sprite. JavaScript oh, libraries, construct assets. Dang, I wonder where I put it. Did I not put it somewhere? Oh, maybe I put it in here. Score RR. No, that was for something else. <laughs> Red Rocket. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's on my other computer, though. Where did I put it, though? Actual software. Sucky. It's, uh, it must be somewhere here because I was just, I, I installed it from one of these things. Tools, sprite editors. Is that what it is? Yeah, here you go. This is it. Yeah, here we go. Let's get this all, let's get this rolling. Yeah. See, so even the, the interface, it's all cute and Pixar-y. It's awesome. And it has very similar, um, it's very similar, like it's very similar to Photoshop, which I love. In fact, I'm almost certain that the creator of this tool might have watched a tutorial of mine because I almost feel like a lot of the shortcuts mirror mine, except for some of the basic ones. <laughs> I was actually shocked. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is already like kind of good. Brush. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Where? See? Where? Where? I think it already... These hockeys are already doing it. Yeah, look. What the? How? How does it know? Yeah, so sweet. I wonder if, uh, what was the, was it Alt B? How do I make a new frame? Alt N? <laughs> new empty. Yeah. Alt B. Yeah. Okay. So you can do you can do animations, dudes. It's pretty cool. And then you can do uh not upstairs. So then you can do uh ground level onion skin. Just makes sense. You know what I mean? Like there's no reason to Oh, and there's a better tool. What's the hockey? Yeah, that's really nice. That's like simpler than Flash even. Um, yeah, well, here you go. It's like, and you don't even have, there's like autofill too. So then we can do this. And then just kind of elude that it flies off screen. Second floor. Give it a couple frames. Oh, you can control how many seconds each frame is too. So you don't have to like make thousands of frames. It's pretty, pretty good. And then we can depend on the window. Depend on the window. See that last frame is off. Ah, neat. Let's see. Where do I end on? Oh, over here. That's what we need to do. So then this frame needs to be like this. And then this frame needs to overstretch and I don't do well with proportions it's a very clear problem that I have with animation there you go pink 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 look at that with animator But it's just a ball, so it's really easy. <laughs> or easier. I actually used to do 2D animation in one of my very yeah. first studio jobs. Uh, but I did it in Flash, and it, was, uh, it wasn't hand-drawn or anything like that. It was like, kind of like the puppeting animation stuff. 
but I hate this interface. I mean, it's cute, <laughs> but I just hate it because uh, it's just, it's just, I feel like I'm in like a child's toy. I don't feel like a professional, but luckily, um, I would say hate is a strong word. It's just not for me. And so we can, I think I have to add an extension. Look at all this garbage. Why do I have to like cycle through all this stuff? So I go to desktop. No. It's going to be in my Dropbox. Let's go to. I have to go out of this even. I have to go to yeah, the storage. And Dropbox. And then. What pencil? Game or coffee. Sprite editors. There you go. Hit OK. Check this out. Now we go to theme. Let's select adjust scaling. Oh, yeah, I want to adjust scaling. I want it to look like <laughs> pixel art in other sense. Uh, so much cleaner. I just can't widen that mid thing, which is kind of annoying, but it's fine. <laughs> Downstairs, near the stairs. Yeah, it's just a little annoying because you can't adjust certain things too easily. No, desktop, desktop, desktop. <clears throat> but it is nice. 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 Yeah, it is nice though to be able to like have it now look like a, a professional tool, you know? The tool is professional, even when it's just the pixel already looking thing. It just it just feels weird when it's not like that, you know, the way that I'm showing it right now. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean. Okay, I can't get yeah. into it. So good. All right. Oh, let me see if I can save. I was having issues saving before. Let's go to desktop. See what happens. Yeah, saves fine. My laptop is giving me tons of issues. I'm not going to try to argue. Yeah, I can save fine. Sweet. Like oh, yeah, look at my tests that I've been doing. I always save my tests onto my desktop. All right. Let me do one thing. The software, if you're interested, is called Aspirite. It's... It's like if Ace was spelled with the S and then Prite at the end, so Ace Sprite. And then let's pin this to the test bar. So I don't have to keep looking for it. Put it right next to Construct. I have a feeling I'm gonna be using all those things. I always think it's gonna be funny if I really continue this pixel art adventure if i genuinely do i keep saying that i will but i keep flip-flopping but i really just should just do it um but let's say i do i think it's gonna be fun to be have like um these pixel art games and if my characters ever talk i'm going to paint them amazing you know and i'd like to do these really nice paintings of the characters so that when they're in the game <laughs> they look like these fun little pixel art characters but then like when like uh, the actual character is talking or like there's like a dramatic scenario. It's just like a hyper rendered. <laughs> yeah, I think that, I think that would be cool. I think people would really be into it. Uh, a game like Celeste did something like this where they had like, hold on just a second. Um, where like, you know, like the, the quality is, is a little bit more higher, like high quality. Like they have these segments where you go from map to map in uh, Celeste um, and it, it makes you go through an, an environment that is, um, what, 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 what can I say? Yeah, it makes you go through an environment that is like three dimensional. And then like when the characters are talking, like it's like an illustration. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And um, we're watching the video game awards, huh? Oh, I, I didn't see that. 
I, I missed most of it. I only saw the end. Uh, I saw like I saw the Mortal Kombat trailer, and then I think after that, I saw all the stuff afterwards. I'm very happy God of War one too. I was like, oh, yeah, me man. too. I saw that like uh, Red Dead was underneath that, and I was just like, I really don't want Red Dead to win. Oh, yeah, and because I don't really think it's a game. I think it's more of like a simulation, <laughs> like a Western simulation. You know what I mean? Uh, With like a narrative. And plus, like, uh, the people who worked on it, like, nearly died working on it, you know? Oh, so. yeah, I hear the, um, it wasn't, it wasn't great for the action team. Yeah, it's, I, I, I haven't bought the game mostly because of that. Uh, and even though I know it's just a drop in the bucket, I'm just like, man. Were they just overworked or something? Oh yeah, they like make them work a lot. Like they like there was like I think years ago where the the wives petitioned because a lot of their husbands weren't coming home, and and a lot of them were like the like hey can it, is it alright if my my husband comes home like is he gonna lose his job if he just can come home today? <laughs> you know he's already worked like seventeen hours. You know, it's, it's, didn't they have a similar thing with EA? Maybe it's Activision. Can't remember which one. Yeah, uh, this is definitely a common practice in the industry. But Rockstar uh, is notoriously like even more vicious. They like really make people work a lot. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I mean, someone's got to make those ball physics on the horses, right? <laughs> it's like it's totally worth it, right? Uh, that, that's kind of my. That's my point of like criticism. It's like nobody cares about fucking ball physics. It's just a cool like water cooler talking point, but people get over it real quick. You know, I think all the major features that really make that game great um, could have been done in a more timely manner. And all the other stuff is just like, did you know you could do all this stuff? It's like that's I don't care. I can do that also in real life. You know. Uh, I don't play games to to see if they can simulate real life. I play games to escape real life. <laughs> you know, uh, it's cool to talk about. Like I said, but I think ultimately, um, like one day, I think when it happens, like if a game finally makes uh, a game that is super realistic into the sense of like all the stuff is real and everything, um, the only thing that will still make that game attractive, like will not be the realistic elements because everybody else will have the same kind of technology and access to that stuff. It will be what makes it stand out. Like what's the charm of it? What's the fantasy of it? You know, it's not going to be like if the horse's balls are real. You know, any, any questions? Oh, I do want to, I want to see if I can do some cool Pixar right now. Let's see if I can turn this into a Pixar character. Oh, shoot. Sorry about that. If uh, you had to choose what convention to go to, which one would be your choice? Um, just as like a concept artist? Yeah, like what would be a good convention to actually book tickets for? and. Spend the uh, time money to get there. I would say um, probably probably THU. It's pretty expensive, but the amount of stuff you can get out of that is pretty dope. So yeah, I'll take THU. Can you explain what that is? You don't know what THU is? Oh, dude. Uh, nope. Trojan Horse House. Trojan Horse is a unicorn. No, dude. I wanted the whole thing. Trojan Horse was a unicorn. Yeah. It's just to uh, go here. Let it speak for yourself. It has like cool movie trailer trailers and stuff. But uh, essentially, it's like one of the biggest and baddest like events. Like they have all artists from all around the world. They have like this huge kind of messaging, and uh, you get to hang out with other artists like minded that are really awesome and very inspired. 
and inspiring events. It's a lot of fun. I have not been, but um, from what I've seen and what I've heard, I have students who've gone, and it's it's a tremendous opportunity, you know. And so I would suggest that. Okay. All right. Cool. It is done. Um, right after that, I would say the next event that's coming up is LightCon, but we'll see how that goes. That's Bobby Chu's event that he's doing. Uh, I think that's going to be pretty good. It's supposedly supposed to be the better CTN, uh, which is thankfully going to happen. And then uh, GDC is pretty good, but like I think it's harder these days. And you have to kind of know people too when you're there because you want to get into parties and stuff like that so you can hang out with like a lot of awesome industry folk. Uh, GDC is the type of event too that if like a nuke was to hit San Francisco during that event, the whole game industry would collapse. Just to give you a sense of like how many industry professionals go there. But just because you're there doesn't necessarily mean you get to meet them. You know, you're, that's why I'm saying like you should like have some good connections and it's even better. But it is a good event. And then I think right after that would be like maybe a PAX or GamesCon or any, any event really. Uh, you should just go as many events as you can. Uh, workshops for our, us are really good. Like you should go to like industry workshops. That's a pretty good one. So now you have two uh, some of my students have host their own. Uh, Edge Control is one of them, and uh, Nonstop Barcelona is another one. These are good places. Awesome! I'll look them all up. What was the name for the one in Barcelona? Nonstop Barcelona. people to my um my, my students run those it's funny because the story with those is that like i had students that they'll take my class and they would ask the very same question right and they're like you know there's no events in my country and it sucks and i wish there was and i'm like well why don't you make an event and then they're like oh yeah <laughs> and then uh, they do or they did and then both those events were amazing and they were shocked at how it's totally possible and uh, it, it, they keep growing every year and they're very happy about that. And I'm like, yeah, they just keep doing them. They're going to keep growing. You're going to love it. I'm Compliment. So let me speak guys. All right. Any other questions? So far, so good. Those are pretty good questions. Keep at it, though. Sorry, in the background, the kiddos playing some games. So, get to the private match. Oh, my gosh. The Nastro stuff is coming back. Did you guys watch the Game Awards? Did any of you guys watch it? Or even know about it? Uh, I watched a streamer watch the awards. <laughs> oh yeah, which streamer? Exactly. Uh, soda popping. Who? He's a very popular uh, Twitch streamer. Soda popping. Yeah, he's like the embodiment of um, of uh, I guess of my childhood and probably many others. Just a goofy Australian nerd. Plays a bunch of video games. Just get cool. mad at him. Yeah, I um, yeah, I, I, uh, I think I did the same thing. It was a guy named Young Ye. Uh, I didn't like it though because uh, he kept on talking over stuff that I wanted to watch, um, but I was too lazy to find like the, or the original source. And like I said, I got the tail end of it anyway, so it's just like right, I'll just watch this. Because he was just like being critical of all this stuff. And I'm just like, oh, I don't care. Like, I don't care what you think. Um, I do, obviously. I think he's a great YouTuber. But it's just at that time, I really didn't care. I was just like, all right, cool. Like, you you don't like it. It's like uh, the way that I thought about that when I was watching it 
was that it felt like you're like watching like the Super Bowl or some sort of event that you really want to watch, and you just have a friend that keeps on talking over it. That's what it felt like, and I was just like, ah. was like, all right, dude. Um, but it was my own doing, right? Because I, I volunteered to watch it through this means. But I'm saying like, a stream through like YouTube or something, wasn't it? That's what I'm saying. I didn't take the effort. I was at the gym. I was just like working out, and then I was just like, this was. It came up in my YouTube, so I just was like, I right, watched this. And I was like running. So it wasn't that I was being like lazy in the sense that I could have changed it. It's just like I was actually in the middle of doing intensive workout. So like uh, to stop my workout just to change it um, didn't seem practical. And it was a minor anno anno annoyance. That's all. But I know some people do like that. They, they like they are participating because they want to have the bashing you know just talking well, trash for those. certain games yeah he was talking trash about a lot of stuff and so were some of the people in his chat and i just was like i don't care they didn't like just watch it like didn't like a bunch of indie games win awards i wasn't really paying attention to it that much i don't know that's what i'm saying i only got towards the tail end which was all the big hitters and they didn't i mean i guess from my perspective i didn't see that many things that were like super <laughs> I don't know that most people would be super upset about, and I tend to be one of the more critical people in the video game world. Yeah, I don't know if that's true. That's great. Oh, you know what? I bet you it's because the, the God of War won over um, over Red Dead. Everybody seemed to be so super hyped about that game. Yeah, Red Dead. Uh, it is a good game, but it was built on the backs of slaves <laughs> that were played or paid, but they were slaves nonetheless because they couldn't leave their work promptly and they couldn't really fight for better conditions. But, you know, God of War definitely crunched. I'm almost certain they did. But to think that they have similar crunches, is, there's no way that's true. Crunch is, is definitely a systematic problem that we need to work out in our industry. Uh, people talk about unions, but I think unions are too late. Uh, I don't think there's a chance that unions will survive. Uh, and plus, I don't think unions make sense for our industry too. Even though this, it's unions is typically what you expect to help the workers, like the worker protection, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but like unions don't make sense uh, for a few reasons. Um, one is because the creative ability isn't on, isn't built off of the, off of seniority, meaning like, like, even though I've been painting longer than most of you guys, like if you guys were put the effort in and, and paint and really work, uh, pretty hard, you guys could probably be better if not as good as me, you know, but this is definitely true. This can definitely happen. Right. Um, but let's say you guys become better than me, right? Like that's definitely a thing. I have plenty of students that fit this bill, right? So the point I'm making is that like you can become better and being better um, should mean that you should have more opportunities than me and you should be able to get the types of jobs that I couldn't even get. But like a union would potentially prevent something like that from happening because they wanna protect people like me who let's say I'm in the union, I've been in the union for let's say as many years as I've been working and I've been putting money into the union from my paycheck. That's how it works, I believe. And uh, because of this, I have, you know, seniority and I have like legacy kind of things going on, meaning that that all the jobs should go to me first, whether I want to or not. And then once that's done, it goes to the next person within that rank and then so forth and so on. So someone like you is young whippersnapper. Uh, if you're not part of that union, then you're going to have to really wait you know, hmm. uh, and this is already true. This already happens in the film industry. They have unions there and that's exactly what happens. So it's not even hypothetical. It's, it's a reality. Does the union have to have that aspect of it? Can it just be like something that pre prevents like people from over, you know, being overworked, but not necessarily something that privileges them due to, um, due to like seniority? Well, that's that's my point. Like, once you get the ball rolling, it's like a slippery slope type thing. 
that once it's rolling, then people start to say like, you know, you're, you already have a union and you want to feel protected. So you're like, Hey, I want to like extend this protections to these things, you know? Ah, uh, okay. And, and then if there's enough people there, to, if it's a democracy, they're going to vote for their own personal, you know? Um, and then, and, and it will just naturally occur. Of course, why wouldn't I? If I had an opportunity, to, uh, had an opportunity to, why wouldn't I? Right? I think personally, I would vote against it because of the very reasons I just laid out. Right? But I know not everybody is that altruistic. <laughs> you know, like it's just not everybody is that <laughs> kind. You know, and I know I would be outvoted. Is what I'm getting at. Yeah. You know. It's funny that and, we're talking on this topic too, because the girlfriend just emailed or texted me saying that she's staying late at work because they need to do some crunch stuff. Yeah. Um, that's exactly right. And so um, I think the solution and I'm, I'm working on the solution is uh, people make their own shit. Right. Like people in technology is going to level up to the point that games like Red Dead won't need teams of millions, you know, or hundreds of thousands rather. Or not even hundreds of thousands, thousands, right? Um, or or people just won't like that kind of game because it's just kind of like, all right, we get it. <laughs> you can play poker, you know. And I'm just like happen to be a character in this a second life, you know what I mean? And so, I think it's just a. I think the solution is potentially a capitalistic one. It's a it's a competition one. Right, it's a free market one, mm -hmm. but we'll see. I don't know. I actually don't know for sure, but I, I'm I'm putting some guesses that this might be it because indie development is growing rapidly, right? And there's a lot of creative de developers who are just like a few people, you know, and they're making really amazing games that are really interesting and really fun, you know, and very challenging. Uh, it feels very much like how I, like this industry feels very much how it felt when I first started concept art. It felt very like young and very like lively and there's a lot of interesting things happening. I feel like I'm, I've lucked out potentially again and joining an industry that's just starting out. Um, but I'm not using any of my wisdom that I learned from the previous one, like staying focused, sharing my work often. Well, I have to have work to share, but like, you know what I mean? Mm. And so it's clear to me that this, this industry oh, is happening and it's pretty cool. And I should, I should be a part of it somehow. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think a lot of the older gamers are a lot more disillusioned with like AAA titles. Yeah. Um, I think you're right. There's, you know, sparing like the, the God of Wars and uh, you know, um, like the Witcher threes and whatever. But a lot of them seem to be heading towards like the indie market, um, as you said, which is which is pretty exciting for like you know, uh, like our group of people who want to be like in concept art and want to do stuff in video games because there's going to yeah. be a lot of like opportunity for unique, innovative stuff. Yes, I think this is going to be a natural transition. So we'll just got to hang tight and see how it goes. With that being said, though. I am going to take one last question if there is one. And then yeah. we're going to call it a day. I have a question. Go for it. Uh, how do you balance family, playing games, making games, drawing, painting, all that? Well, the painting is easy because I paint quick. I only need like an hour and I can paint something, right? And then uh, something that of some competence, right? And then the programming and, and making games, that's, that's a periodic there. I spend like three to four hours every day doing it. And it's spread throughout the day. It's like a, uh, an hour in the morning, uh, an hour or two during the middle of the day, and then an hour or two at the end of the day, depending on what I can get done earlier. I usually learn programming stuff. Uh, I, before I was like learning a lot of 3D and all that stuff, like I, like the examples I mentioned earlier. But I realized maybe I should just transition to alternative, you know, because this is just becoming a nightmare um, to learn too many. I'm just like, there's just too many things. I'm going at a, a snail's pace and a pace that I don't really appreciate. 
you know, it, it's, it's something that like, I, I have, I have a foresight that if I were to keep this up, it's going to take me like 10 years just to be good at any, which one of these things, like, or, or two to three things of these things, like to be really good at them. It's going to take me like another 10 years where I think I'd rather spend those 10 years, like becoming really good at programming and game design, right. Versus just like learning new tools and artistic stuff. And so I feel like PixArt or just 2D art in general is clearly like, I just need to stay there because I already have spent lots of time and effort learning and mastering this trade. So mm -hmm. all I got to do is just transfer that knowledge to the, the lower scale, right? And sharpen my animation, which is still like a 2D skill, right? It's just like I speak to stay the 2D animation, right? right. Like they all fuel each other. Like go, going into 3D is just a whole different dynamic, right? Uh, and I usually use 3D for 2D stuff too. So it's like, again, my understanding of 3D is mostly a 2D thing, you know? And so uh, I, I think like, like last night I was just thinking about long and hard and I'm like, yeah, I just need to do it. Like, I, I have these ambitions to do all the stuff and I was jumping back into Unreal. I actually really love Unreal Engine. Maybe I, I should look into it. Um, I just wish it had a better uh, platform for web publishing. It just doesn't. So I might stick to Construct or Unity until I see Unreal do a, a switch over. But once they do, then I'll go over to Unreal, no problems. Uh, but Unity, definitely, or Construct, definitely, because these platforms are constantly supplying lots of new and uh, amazing tools to their platform, you know? Mm -hmm. Like they're constantly updating their tools and they're constantly updating their their stuff and so it's just kind of like it's, it's just a matter of like whether i want to do it or not you know which tool i already learned a lot from unity i i've gained a really good understanding of c sharp you know mm -hmm. but i just i love javascript i wish i could just stay in javascript so i might go to construct because construct is developed and built in javascript it's a primarily a 2d platform it's freaking amazing and i saw that there is a javascript plugin which allows you to to create your own javascript code so if i could find kind of the parallel then i'll just do that but right now i just got to do research into that but uh unreal for sure i'll switch over to unreal if if they created a a powerful web publishing thing that's the only difference like i just want there's a there's a, a platform that i really love it's called play canvas but they're it's clear to me there's like only two people working on that and it's like really hard for them to update. They are updating, but it's just like periodic and it's a slow movement, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so I just need to kind of decide between construct or unity. So I'm going to do some R and D this weekend to really decide uh, construct again, is super dope, but they're um, the way that they kind of program and stuff. is just kind of like, I don't, I just don't like it. Um, it's really easy. It's very intuitive, but it's clear, like it, because of that easiness, it's like creating a lot of um, handicaps to like really getting into there and really coding it, you know, really hardcore. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, where like C sharp with um, um, what you call it with uh, with Unity is really good, but Aside of the programming part, like uh, Construct is really versatile, has so much to it. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to see what's up. But anyways, I'm going to get going, though. Okay. All right. See you guys later. Have a good weekend. Work hard. Push yourselves. And I'll talk to you guys next week. Later, friends. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.